Hi guys, welcome back to my space, my happy place, you guys. Uh, what do we want to do? So first of all, I want to say thank you for like such an overwhelming response to my couple little pours last night using uh, Dollar Tree paints with no pouring medium. Um, the whole point of that little exercise, you guys, was just to show you that you can be creative and make pretty things without busting you know, the family budget. So I'm going to try to answer a couple questions that were asked and they're asked quite frequently and they're really, really good questions and they're super thought provoking for me. Um, sometimes I do things really mechanically and I just don't stop and think about it. So I'm going to try to answer some of those questions. And if there's anything you want to know, you guys, I am an open book. Just send me a message or DM me on Facebook and I'll send you a picture of whatever I'm using. So Black Onyx by Walmart looks like this with the exceptions of the drips and I added them later um it's my favorite black paint and unfortunately Walmart is going to discontinue it so I'm gonna have to find a new favorite but it's CIL platinum black onyx pre-tinted two-in-one paint and primer um this sheen is eggshell I use anything I use eggshell and I use semi-gloss as well I've never tried the gloss I have tried the midnight black it doesn't work so Normally, here in Canada, these are $34.97. They were marked down to $24. And then I, in turn, got two gallons for $19 a gallon, which was a skookum price. Um, the next thing that a couple viewers asked was regarding the Minwax wood conditioner. Um, I've had this... Oh, my God. What was that? Oh, just ignore that. Someone's talking to me on Facebook. I don't know if you guys heard that. Did you look to uh, Minwax wood conditioner that we put on our US Cellmex. This is what the can looks like. I've had this can forever. It's a very small amount. Uh, Minwax pre-stained wood conditioner, red can. Don't buy the blue can. Blue can is water-based and it will not work. So you have to get the oil-based. Um, it's really smelly. I warn you now, the stuff stinks. But it works the price we pay for art so you'll notice that I am painting on a new surface tonight you guys I'm painting on this beautiful wood table not really I'm painting on my same marble piece that I always paint on so the tabletop that I'm painting on my spinner is nothing more than a 24 by 24 inch tile that I got at the Habitat for Humanity store for five bucks. And it's sitting on an Amazon spinner. And it, the nothing securing it except four big globs of plasticine that I also got at the dollar store. So the good part about the plasticine is you put it on your spinner, drop your tile or your table or your wood or whatever you're using to expand your work surface, and then drop a level on it after you have your tabletop on and you can just kind of wiggle it around with your hands and get it level so I know everything is sitting level and flush which is super super critical because I know it's happened to you guys and it's happened to me you pour something amazing and you're stoked and you go to bed and you come out and you have an amazing puddle on your table yeah it's not leveled okay Walmart black onyx thinned with nothing but water I don't know what I'm going to do when Walmart gets rid of it because it's going to be sad. So I moved my spinner around so many times and I'm trying to tell you guys how level it is. And you can see that my puddle's all running this way. You're thinking, oh yeah, it's really level. All right. What are we going to do? Are we going to, are we going to swipe or? Huh? Okay, well, I jumped into this painting with absolutely no pre-thought on what I was doing. Other than I'm doing it on a smaller tile. So, dollar store paints, you guys. Um, I'm really, I'm glad you guys like that tutorial. Um, my goal was nothing more than just to show people that there is alternatives. You know, you don't have to buy it, as I said last night. You can go cheap practice you know get your techniques down blooms okay let's bloom let's bloom with dollar store paints can we do it yeah we can 
acrylic neon orange right out of the bottle um, this won't be a traditional bloom because I am not a traditional bloom type painter you guys I tend to like things a little more chaotic and all over the place but for the sake of this we'll do it just like this let's use the same colors as last night bright red so blooms bloom techniques are really really challenging and anybody that tells you oh yeah I got it no problem they practiced everything worth doing and worth getting good at is practice so when you see these folks that just knock it out of the park I will guarantee that was hot pink neon pink guarantee that they have spent tons and tons of time practicing so this is a really good way to practice your blooms okay this is TLP crescendo this is mixed well somewhat properly it's not mixed the way the pros do it I mixed mine with artist loft pre-mixed pouring medium and a little bit of Velspar so it has kind of an opaque look but it's gonna dry the Velspar dries crystal clear so it's gonna dry clear just like everybody else and you're gonna get that beautiful blue sparkle um, what now what now you guys let's get a little bit of white in there so this is actually white cell mix Amsterdam Minwax wood conditioner and some more hot pink and then we're gonna do some more cell mix lots of it because we're on black so this color cell mix is gonna look black on the camera but it's actually not it's actually a red black um, it was a little bit thick in my last pour and it made a big blob in the center and when I tried to pour it out blow it out there was absolutely no way it was it gonna move so I had to do some scraping you guys I had to do some scraping all right so I'm not liking I'm not liking all this stuff so we're just gonna mix it up a bit let's try that so one thing that was recommended or suggested was that I change the angle of my camera so that you guys can't see my head I can't do that I pour in my spare bedroom aka my paint studio and I have really limited space and I can't I can't change the camera lens, the camera angle so you guys are gonna have to see my head here we go guys All right, so my blowing out sucked. This section's great. This section's not so good. Um, and like I said, technique is critical. And it is a good way to practice. So I'm not a bloomer. I have done blooms, but they're not my thing. I, I do tend to like rather scoop it up, swipe it out, or change it and put it somewhere else. But again the goal is this section so if my blowout was good the whole thing would look like that which is absolutely beautiful and it's dollar store paints but my blowing out needs some work so I'm going to put some swipes through this because it's just traditional blooms to me are I don't know they're just I don't know they just don't work for me I tend to like things a little more abstract and a little more chaotic. So Atelier Red, White. What color do we need to get in there? Maybe some more orange. So it's really, really important to practice your technique. And again, it's a super good way to do it. You don't have to sell your firstborn child to pay for supplies. Um, and yeah, they work really well. All right, let's do this. Let's put a big swipey in down the middle. Where am I gonna go? If I turn you guys, can you still see? I can only swipe in one direction. How stupid that sounds. Okay, I wanna come in right here.
could just stop right there. Yeah, I'm going to put another swipe in. Same colors. I, I was talking to a lady today and said, I always feel so bad for people when I know they're struggling because I know what it's like. I, I know. I've told this story before. It's in a couple of my videos. When I first started, I painted abstract. But when I first started this acrylic pouring technique, it started kind of almost, not innocently, but I had gone with a previous boyfriend and we had been at a home. Okay, here we go, guys. We had been at the brick looking for furniture and I saw these beautiful abstract paintings and they wanted a fortune for them. Like I'm talking like two, three, four hundred dollars. And of course, I'm pretty thrifty. Cheap, cheap, cheap. And there was absolutely no way I was going to pay for that. So if you guys have heard the story, this is where you fast forward me. But for those who are joining me tonight, you might as well have a little bit of background on who I am. Anyway, I'm super cheap and there's no way I was going to pay $400. So I came home and said, oh, I'm not, I'm not paying for those. I can do that myself. So I went and bought a whole bunch of canvases and a whole bunch of acrylic paint, having absolutely no experience with acrylic painting. And I set out to paint myself a picture and it was really nice. I liked it. It hung on my bedroom wall for a really long time. And it started, I'm going to break this up, you guys. Um, it started my whole journey with fluid art. Uh, the wider you hold your kebab stick, the more of that beautiful black base color that we're going to pull through. So this is no longer going to look like a bloom because I'm not really a bloomer girl. Um... And I was really fortunate. I had a little local restaurant in Sydney that took a lot of my paintings in, didn't charge me any commission, and I sold quite a few paintings. And that started me on the whole fluid thing. So it was prior to the Shibi Bloom recipe being released. And I really, really was just pumped. I really wanted to learn to do the blooms. And when it finally came out, I think it was Tammy Anderson that had one of the first recipes that I used and I couldn't do it. I mixed everything exactly the way she said and there was no way I couldn't do it. I tried and I tried and I wasted gallons of paint and I got pissed off and I was to the point where I was just ready to fire it all out the window and so I literally stamped like loser on my forehead. I put it all away and I thought, well, this just isn't for me. I can't do this. I put all my paints away and they all sat in the closet. And then that year, this is really pretty, you guys. That following Christmas, this ex-boyfriend and his family decided that we were going to kind of change Christmas up a little bit. So instead of having the whole commercial Christmas thing, we decided that we were going to do something a bit different. So the rules were that everybody was to receive one store-bought present at a cash denomination of 50 bucks or something. And we were to have one gift from a thrift store, anything you wanted, thrift store treasure. And the third thing was that something had to be homemade. Well, I don't sew. And so what was I going to do? Yeah, now I'm screwed, right? So I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to make coasters because that was at the beginning where the whole bloom thing was coasters. I'm going to make coasters. So I drug all my paints back out. By then there was some more recipes. And I followed the recipes very carefully. And I slowly started seeing some success. But it came from not caring anymore. I was just going to try it and see. I no longer had to just have this amazing thing. And I did see success and I did paint coasters that year and they were gobstopping you guys. They were beautiful. 
Okay, we're gonna spin this a little bit. And if the paint starts to fly, plug your ears because I just painted my walls. They were beautiful. And that's kind of where this whole fluid art thing went for me. That's how I all started. So when I hear people grumbling and griping and beating themselves up, be kind to yourself. Um, all of these techniques take time and practice and they're costly and I sometimes I said today talking to someone on on whatever this channel thing is YouTube that it's almost a rite of passage to have multiple failures before you have a success and it just it just seems like that's just how things go with the fluid art and especially the more complicated techniques like the bloom so, you know, give yourself some time and practice and practice with cheapy paints. Practice on tiles, you guys. Don't go spending gobs and gobs of money on canvases. Practice on tiles. These are super, super cheap. They're easy to resource. They sell incredibly well. And if you hate it, you scrape it and you start all over again. That's the answer to my question about why do I paint on tiles? That's the that's the number one question, or number one answer right there. They're cheap. They're much easier to move around on and manipulate. Um, and they sell super well. So there's a lot of really valuable resources to get tiles. Uh, marketplace, I tell you guys this all the time. Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity sells the four by four tiles for like something like 10 cents. Like that's an amazing price point. Even if you sell your four by four tile for $10, like, yeah, works for me. So there's parts of this that I don't want to lose like this and this. Um, I'm not so fussy on that. And I think we're gonna take out this section right here. Take out two guys, you don't have to keep what you poured. You can take away, you can add to it and you can take away. I'm just gonna fill that back in with just black. So I'm a negative space girl, most of you know that. I'm, I really, really like clean lines and I like some visual interest and I think that negative space adds to our pieces. I'm only my opinion. We are all entitled to our own opinions and they're all widely different. I get, oh, oh, crap. So another question that you guys have asked me is how long does it take for the paint to dry? And this black onyx is really thick and I like it that way because it allows me a lot of wiggle room to really stretch and expand things out and yet I can maintain the shapes of the patterns that I create. So the black onyx mixed with water it takes about two days to dry and that's only dry to the touch paint takes i'm gonna say a good two to three weeks to a month to actually cure and there's a whole big difference between dry and cure so if you're resining pieces make sure you let them cure i know you're gonna have a whole bunch of people that say oh i resin mine within two weeks well i don't um I would rather let them sit and know that the paint has had time to cure. So if you're peeling paint off of tiles, you'll notice a huge difference. You take a tile that's two weeks old and you can score the edges and peel the paint right off. You take a tile that's been left for a month and it isn't that easy. Okay, so I wish 
that I had to put a couple more swipes in there because uh, this is really pretty, but I didn't. So I kind of look at all my pieces and try to determine as far as modifying. So just making them something different, whether can I make it any better or am I just going to kind of mess up something pretty? This is beautiful. This is beautiful. That's okay. And the rest is just kind of, eh, I'm not really sure. So I'm going to say that we take our kebab stick and we do some modifications on this, you guys. And again, it's just a kind of a fun way to maybe make it better. Maybe we'll wreck it. I don't know. We're going to take a little bit of this black paint off the work surface, though, because it's super distracting and I can't tell what's going on. On my fancy new tabletop, you guys. All right, well, my tile is way easier to clean off my original black tile. So if I had a balloon, let's go back to talking about blooms for a minute. Had I have blown my bloom out properly, which we all know I was an epic failure, uh, this is what you would have created. So, you know, really swiping and blooming and blowing it out, it's exactly the same process. It's just a different technique. It's a different application. So if your blowing skills are up to snuff, which obviously mine aren't, then yeah, good to go. Good to go with dollar store paints. All right, you guys, let's make some little modification lines. I need to just turn a little bit. So my bamboo kebab stick and we're just going to go in we're going to start right here and we're just pulling some of that black we're just making little lines nothing fancy and i can get really really lost in this process and quite often i overdo things because it's like doodling, right? And I doodle too. I do all these Zen drawings and I can get just completely gone. So I'd like to see some more negative space. So I'm going to hold my stick on a wide angle. And I didn't really create negative space, but I did put another color in. So keep in mind, every line you put in will change the composition of your piece. So if you're lucky and you can look ahead and see what you want to accomplish, then yeah, you're lucky. I, I just kind of wing it, hope for the best. I know that sounds really stupid, but I really do. So there are many different little patterns that you can create with just a really simple, simple little lines, you guys. Don't be afraid. Like, just get in there and go for it. And you know, worst case scenario, if you screw it up, will you scrape it off? <coughs> Excuse me. As long as my work surface is clean like this, I can scrape all this paint into a cup and I can reuse it. So there's absolutely nothing, nothing lost other than a piece that you really just thought was sort of adequate, right? This is a hard one because there's things I really like and don't want to wreck and there's other things that I don't care about. Let's do one more in here and then we'll leave those cells alone. 
So I'm wiping off in my glove. You don't have to. Um, if you want to add sort of some little like floral stamens, let's do it up here. Let's go back through this. So we're going to, let's go through this one. So we're going to go back through this. We're going to leave some paint on this time. And then we're going to just go back through another one with the paint on it. Ta-da! Little flower stamens with absolutely no effort whatsoever, my friends. Turn you back around. Turn your pieces too. I see things. I see things in one direction that I do not see in another. All right, let's uh let's come in here. So contrasting lines will always yield you the nicest patterns, but they're absolutely not necessary. So this is pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty. I don't know about this pink splotch in the middle. So let's try to let's try to do something with it. Hmm. I don't know what to do. Wide angle. I don't think that was it. Okay, catching up those little lines somewhere in my messy space here. I have my handy dandy stainless steel kebab stick. So a nice way to fill in these little lines is just to do a little curly cue. You guys have all seen me do this. Um, if it doesn't hold up the first time, let your paint set up a bit. Give it like 20 minutes, half an hour, and you can go back in and give it another little curl and it will stay. This one is challenging because what you can't see is the TLP color underneath. Any mica pigments um, are really, really hard to hold their shape until they start setting. And then, like I said, just go back in, give it a little half a twist. And it'll all work out in your favor. So let's make some more of those. Just for fun. Another fun way to embellish your painting. Okay, hey. wide popsicle stick, you guys. This time we're just going to put it down on a line and we're going to rock it back and forth so that each side of our popsicle stick touches the colors on either side of our acrylic color. I didn't do that one very well. And it just creates this funky little chain like chain like thing. If you make a sloppy mark, just pull it back and do it again. The wider the line, the wider the stick you're going to need. So if you have, if you have like a really wide line and rocking it doesn't back go, doesn't work, doesn't touch both ends, get a bigger stick. So I'm not at all happy with the middle still. 
Other than that, it's pretty funky. So this is just a tiny line. So we're just, we don't have to rock it. We can just touch down, touch down, lift off. You can do it in the middle of your pieces if you want. So the benefit with this Amazon thing, if it wasn't all covered in paint, is this end of it is exactly the same shape as a popsicle stick. And it's just a smaller work surface. Scrape some paint off of it. So you can do the same thing. You can take a line like this and just touch it down and pull it in. Doesn't look like a lot, but when you step back and take a look at the whole thing, you're like, oh, wow, oh, that's funky. You can use it. What else do we do with this? I've forgotten. I haven't done this for so long. You can make fun little edges. You can leave your popsicle, your skewer stick. You can leave it half in your base and half into your acrylics and pull it through that way. And then it will, you're not even pulling it. You're just dropping it and lifting it. And it will make just a really fun little, I don't know what I'm trying to tell you guys. Just do it, you guys. Fun little edges. So we can just keep going if you want. Sometimes I get way carried away and I step back and think, oh, you should have stopped half an hour ago. Again, just a super fun way to modify and embellish. And I'm going to give this a spin. I know you're wondering, why am I spinning it now? Um, I'm not 100% sure that I have enough paint off of it. And one of the best ways for me to tell is to spin it. And if everything stays put, then I know I have enough base off. So if my paints, generally, if I'm using a pouring medium and my paints are mixed correctly, my paints will expand, but the shapes will remain. And that's how I can tell with pouring medium if things are mixed right, but there is no medium. And there's not a lot of movement, so that's pretty good, I think. Maybe one more time. So look at me on my quick little tutorial with dollar store paints. Uh, I no longer have a bloom, which shouldn't come as any surprise to you guys. So if you really want to go crazy, we might as well just keep going. So I'm on such a roll and I'm just so easy to understand tonight. If I had a toothpick, it would be better. So some really, really fine little details. You would like to have a toothpick, ideally. I don't have one. I'm too lazy to go get one. So I'm just going to do this super gentle. So same thing. We're just pulling in the black over top of this pale pink and just creating little teethy type looking things. Let's pull these in a bit farther. Fancy schmancy, you guys. I really wish this middle wasn't there. Don't you hate that? It happens to everybody, I'm sure. You pour something and you wish something wasn't the way it was. It's like never being happy with life, right? If you have curly hair, you want straight hair. And if you have straight hair, you spend $100 to get a hundred and fifty to get a perm and come out looking like a French poodle. I get it. All right, let's give these a little bit more of a twist. I gotta take my gloves off. It's really hard to twist with gloves on. So when you're twisting, pull up as you go. So if you don't have these fancy kebab sticks, you guys, again, 
think outside the box. You can get bamboo, bamboo um, skewers from the dollar store whole pack for like a buck fifty, and take ten minutes of time and glue any cheapy bead to the end, and you have exactly the same thing. So I'm probably going to come back and turn these one more time in like 20 minutes. But you know what? You get the gist. So again, dollar store paints. And semi bloom technique. I keep looking at this and I don't, I want to do something. So if it looks different, once it gets to Facebook, then you'll know I've altered it. But for now, I'm going to love you and leave you right here. And I'm going to go get some dinner because I'm starving. Um, I would like to say I'm going to put you on hold, but the last time I did that, I lost you. So I think I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm going to love you and leave you right here. Uh, I'm going to bring you down so you're going to be all wobbly for a minute. And then I'll try to show you some of these little details. All right, guys, hang on. Look at these colors. I'm going to turn off the light lock. Yep, still the same colors, you guys. All right. So this section here is lovely. So like I said a couple times before, had my bloom been better, my blowout been better, that's what your bloom would have looked like. Swiping, blooming, same, just a different application. This section's really pretty. It's hard to see. And these are fun cells too. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me in my happy little place. You guys are awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, I really, really am so humbled and so honored by all the comments and questions and interest you guys show. You know what? It's super fun to wake up in the morning and see all these comments and questions. And hopefully I can be of help to somebody. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you need a hand or you are just got a question, reach out, you guys. Ask me. All right, my friends. Take care.